We're on Albo and the economy today. Who is the superior economic manager? What's the scam with this liberal claim of we are the superior economic managers? We haven't heard it much lately. You've heard a lot of sort of, you know, we're the superior people on terror and on security. But let's just take a look at this. Despite the noise in coalition and their fossil media friends, the noise from commentators who are biased already or who don't know what they're talking about, Labor is not doing a bad job at all if you look at the performance of our peers in the OECD. Because our fortunes, of course, economically, because we're a big export nation, rely on decisions made overseas, how much people will pay for our commodities. But it's particularly interesting at this time because there are gale force headwinds of global inflation and there is the cost of living crisis at home. Now, that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods on recession. It is probably in a per capita recession right now if you strip migration out. And there are hundreds of substantial things that the government could do, which it can't do for politically difficult reasons. But it also means that Albo and his treasurer, Jim Chalmers, are doing a pretty good job because they're coming up the ranks of their global peers on a number of metrics. And surely they have to be better than the alternative, the dinosauric option. Now, a while back, we took a look at the coalition claim of being superior economic managers. It was a pretty forensic look too. We stretched back decades and we found the claim to be baseless. Now, we'll put our treasurer and measurer a research in a link so people can check it out in more detail. But what we did was we ranked all the treasurers according to their own measures of performance, that is economic growth, over 50 years from Harold Holt to Josh Frydenberg. Here are a few of the highlights. John Howard actually romped in number one as Australia's worst treasurer. First, second and fourth positions with the worst quarterly economic growth that is recessions. Harold Holt came third. Paul Keating was in fifth place. And we're dealing here with consecutive negative quarters. Bearing in mind the definition of recession is two negative quarters in a row. And this time we ranked by annual negatives. Mr. Howard again was the winner with four quarterly negatives in a row and the worst annual result of negative 2.943% going backwards. Harold Holt had three in a row. Keating had four in a row an annual negative of as low as 1.15%. Now, there are all sorts of nuance here, which we could argue till the cows come home about, you know, when the GST came in, or obviously depressed things and so on. But what cannot be debated is that, firstly, it's overseas factors which determine, more than anything, the performance of the Australian economy. Inflation, which is generated globally, Commodity prices paid for our exports, also based on inflation, and these things are largely out of our hands. And the other thing, number two, is that the government, the last government that is, was the biggest taxing and spending government of all time, despite their protestations to small government. And they also left Australia close to having a, a trillion dollars in debt, massive debt. Now, to be fair to them, much of that was due to COVID, where the whole world economy basically shut down. And Josh, of course, eagerly strived for his budget surplus, but he never quite got there. And then Jim Chalmers romped along, thanks to commodity prices, lucky Jim, and pulled off a budget surplus last year. That was thanks very much to soaring fossil fuel and farm prices. Exports, therefore, higher tax revenue from corporations and so forth. So this is probably why we're not hearing much from the coalition these days on their labour is weak on the economy. It's weak on terror. We're hearing much more about them being weak on terror at the moment. But Labor, unfortunately, has not sold its economic credentials particularly well, it should be said. It hasn't got the message across. Well, the media environment for them, the coalition cheerleader media organisations out there, Nine, Seven and, of course, Rupert's News Corp, don't help them. But we have climbed up the global rankings on wages growth, falling inflation, jobless, although un underemployment rather than unemployment remains an issue. We're almost at a full employment economy at the moment. Yet inequality too is another issue. But we've gone up the rankings in terms of government spending, budget deficits and net debt as well. All the metrics 
are fairly favourable compared to our peer economies. Still, but for immigration growth, we would be a bit dead in the water at the moment because migration has been at record levels. GDP grew 0.5% over the December quarter, the most recent numbers, and 2.7% for the year, which isn't great, better than nothing. The drop in imports and rise in exports kept things ticking along on the GDP front. In fact, against the OECD rival nations, we climbed from 36 out of 38 during SCOMO time to 12 out of 38 last year. And there were two consecutive quarters of real wages growth as the share of Australia's income going to workers as opposed to corporations went up from its nadir of 49.05% to 52.5%. Coalition had steered us to the lowest level ever in terms of who wins from the economy. Capital or labour, mind you. And Tony Burke's trying to address it now with his IR reforms. One of which we don't like is small businesses having to fund lawsuits of their staff because the lawyers are out of control and that is just a money pot and an absolute blight for small business. There should be a threshold there. But mind you, got off track there. This is a global thing. This business of the 70-year trend in capital taking a larger slice of profits than labour. Companies making the money, billionaires rather than workers. 70-year global trend. Surely that now has to be arrested. There's still a lot of the bleeding obvious that they can do to add value to this economy rather than just export stuff and dig holes in the ground and grow stuff. And they can make it fairer too, rather than being just a servant of non-tax-paying multinational companies, a servant of capital and the business lobby groups. Because let's face it, if you put money in the pockets of workers, they spend it. And the velocity of money makes the economy go around, makes the economy tick over. If you give it to rich people, as has been the trend over many decades now, it tends, it's likely to seep offshore in investment and diversification and high-priced imports as well. So the report card for Albo and GM after two years is competent. They don't market it well, Maybe they need to hire ScoMo. He needs a job. And he most definitely conned the media into believing his superior economic management pitch. Thank you for your support. Please like, share or comment in the section below.